Center Hub around the globe. It's theCUBE, presenting innovation for good. Brought to you by Onshape. Hello everyone and welcome to Innovation for Good, a program hosted by theCUBE and brought to you by Onshape, which is a PTC company. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm coming to you from our studios outside of Boston. I'll be directing the conversations today. It's a very exciting all live program. We're going to look at how product innovation has evolved and where it's going and how engineers, entrepreneurs, and educators are applying cutting edge, cutting edge product development techniques and technology to change our world. You know, the pandemic has of course profoundly impacted society and altered how individuals and organizations are going to be thinking about and approaching the coming decade. Leading technologists, engineers, product developers, and educators have responded to the new challenges that we're facing from creating life-saving products to helping students learn from home to how to apply the latest product development techniques and solve the world's hardest problems. And, and in this program, you'll hear from some of the world's leading experts and practitioners on how product development and continuous innovation has evolved, how it's being applied to posit positively affect society. And importantly, where it's going in the coming decades. So let's get started with our first session, Fueling Tech for Good. And with me is John Hirschdick, who is the president of the Software as a Service Division of PTC, which acquired Onshape just over a year ago, where John was the CEO and co-founder. And Dana Grayson is here. She's the co-founder and general partner at Construct Capital, a new venture capital firm. Folks, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for coming on. Great to be here, Dave. Thank you All right, for John. having me. You're very welcome, Dana. Well, look, John, let's get into it. For, first, a belated congratulations on the acquisition of, of Onshape. That was an awesome seven year journey for your company. Tell our audience a little bit about the story of Onshape. You know, take us back to day zero. Why did you and your co-founders start Onshape? Well, I'll actually start before Onshape and let you know, Dave, I've been in this business for almost 40 years, the business of building mm -hmm. software tools for product developers. And I had been part of some previous products in the industry and companies that had been in their era, big changes in this market. And about, um, you know, in the, a little before founding Onshape, we started to see the problems uh, product development teams were having with the traditional tools of that era years ago. And we saw the opportunity presented by cloud web and mobile technology. And we said, hey, we could use cloud web and mobile to solve the problems of product developers, make their their uh, businesses run better, but we'd have to build an entirely new system, an entirely new company to do it. And that's what Onshape's about. Well, so notwithstanding the challenges of, of COVID and the difficulties this year, how, how's the first year uh, been as a, a division of PTC for you guys? How's business, anything you can share with us? Yeah, our first year at PTC has been awesome. It's been, uh, you know, when you get acquired, Dave, you never, you know, you, you have great optimism, but you never know what life will really be like. It's sort of like getting married or something, you know, until you're really doing it, you don't know. And so I'm happy to say that one year into our acquisition um, at PTC, Onshape is thriving. It's worked out better than I could have imagined a year ago along all ways. I mean, uh, sales are up um, in Q4. Our new sales rate grew 80% versus, excuse me, our fiscal Q4, Q3 in the calendar year. It grew 80% compared to the year before. Our educational use is skyrocketing with around 400% growth, most recently year to year of students and teachers in COVID. And we've launched a major cloud platform using the core of Onshape technology called Atlas. So um, just tons of exciting things going on um, at PTC. That's awesome. And thank you for sharing some of those metrics. And of course, you're a very humble individual. You know, people should know a little bit more about you. You, you mentioned, you know, so we founded SolidWorks co-founded SolidWorks, actually founded SolidWorks. You had a great exit in the, in the late 90s, but what I really appreciate is, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you've got a passion for the babies that you, you helped birth. You stayed with Salt yeah. Systems uh, for a number of years, the company that acquired SolidWorks, well yeah. over a decade. And, yeah. and of course, you and I have talked about how you participated in the, the MIT blackjack team, you know, back in the day. Yeah. So you're, as I say, you're, you're very understated for somebody who well, is uh, so accomplished. So thank you. Well, that's kind of you, but I tend to, I tend to um, always keep my eye more on what's ahead, you know, what's next then. And, you know, I look back sure to enjoy it and uh, learn from it, 
about what I can put to work, making new memories, making new successes. I love it. Okay, let's bring Dana into the conversation. Uh, hello, Dana. And you look, you were a fairly early investor in, in Onshape when you were with NEA. And, and I think it was like it was a series B, but it was very right close after the A raise. And, and you were and still are a big believer in industrial transformation. So what, take us back. What did you see about Onshape back then that, that excited you? Oh, thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, I was lucky to be an early investor in Onshape. You know, the things that actually attracted me to Onshape were largely around John and and uh, the team there really setting out to do something, as John says, humbly, something totally new, but really building off of their background was a large part of it. Um, but, you know, I was really intrigued by the design collaboration side of the product. Um, I would say that's, frankly, what originally attracted me to it. What kept me in the room, you know, in terms of the industrial world was seeing just if you start with collaboration around design, what that does to the overall industrial product life cycle, um, accelerating manufacturing, just, you know, modernizing manufacturing, just starting with design. So I'm really thankful to the Onshape guys because it was one of the first investments I made that turned me onto the whole sector. And oh. wow, just such a great pleasure to work with, um, with John and the whole team there and now see what they're doing inside the PTC. And, and you just launched Construct Capital this year, right in the middle of a pandemic, and, and which is awesome. I love it. And you're focused on early stage investing. Maybe tell us a little bit about Constru Construct Capital, what your investment thesis is, and you know, what are the big waves that, that you're hoping to ride? Sure. Um, at Construct, it, it is literally lifting out of NEA what I was doing there. Um, after Onshape, I went on to invest in companies such as Desktop Metal and Tulip, to name a couple of them. Form Labs is another one right. in and around the manufacturing space. But our thesis at Construct is broader than just you know manufacturing and industrial. It really incorporates all of what we'd call foundational industries that have let, yet to be fully tech enabled or digitized. Uh, manufacturing is a big piece of it. Supply chain, logistics, transportation, and mobility are, not, are other big pieces of it. And together, they really drive you know half of the GDP in the U.S. and have been very underinvested and frankly haven't attracted really great founders like John in droves. And I think that's going to change. We're seeing um, entrepreneurs coming out of the tech world orthogonally into these industries and then bringing them back into the tech world, which is which is something that needs to happen. So John and team were certainly early pioneers. And I think, you know, frankly, obviously that voting with my feet that the next set of really strong companies um, are going to come out of this space over the next decade. I think there's a huge opportunity to digitize these sort of tr traditionally non-digital you know, organizations. But Dana, you focused, I think it's, it's accurate to say you focused on even more early stage investing now. And I want to understand why you feel it's important to be early. I mean, it's obviously riskier and rewardier. Uh, but what do you look for in, in companies and, and founders like John? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think there are different styles of investing all the way up to public market investing. I've always been an early stage investor. So I like to work with founders and teams when they're, you know, just starting out. Um, I happen to also think that we're just really early in the whole digital transformation of this world. You know, John and the team have been, you know, back from SolidWorks, et cetera, around the space for a long time. But again, the downstream impact of what they're doing um, really changes the whole industry. And, and so we're pretty early in, in digitally transforming that market. Um, so that's another reason why I want to invest early now, um, because I do really firmly believe that the next set of strong companies and strong returns for my own investors will be in these spaces. Um, you know, what I look for in founders, are people that really see the world a different way. And, you know, sometimes some people think of founders or entrepreneurs as being very risk seeking. You know, if you ask John probably and, and other successful entrepreneurs, they would call themselves sort of risk averse because by the time they start the company, they really have isolated all the risk out of it and think that they have the, given their expertise or what they're seeing, they're just so compelled to go change something. Um, so I look for that type of attitude, experience. Um, as you can also tell from John, he's fairly humble. So humility and just focus is also really important. Um, 
that those are that's a lot of it, frankly. Excellent. Just the yeah, thank you. And, and, and John, you, you've got such a rich history in this space. Uh, and, and, and I wonder if you could sort of connect the dots over time. I mean, when you look back, what were the major forces that you saw in the market in, in the early days, uh, particularly the early days of Onshape? Uh, and, and how has that evolved? And what are you seeing today? Well, I think I, I touched on it earlier. For, actually, can I just reflect on what Dana said about yeah, risk absolutely. taking for just a quick one and say, throughout my life from blackjack to starting SolidWorks to Onshape, it's about taking calculated risks. Yes, you try to eliminate the risks as much as you can, but I always say, I don't mind taking a risk that I'm aware of and I've calculated through as best I can. I don't like taking risks that I don't know I'm taking. <laughs> That's yeah, really yeah. bothersome. You like to bet on sure so, things yeah. as much as you can. Well, yeah. sure things, or at least where you feel you've you've done the research and you see them and you know they're there and you you know you 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 keep that in mind in the room and I think that's great. And Dana did so much for us. Uh, Dana, I want to thank you again for all that you did at every step of the way from where we started to to you know, your journey with us ended formally, but continues informally. Now, back to you, um, Dave, I think question about the opportunity and how it's shaped up. Well, I think I touched on it earlier when I said it's about helping product developers. You know, Our customers are the people who build the future of manufactured goods. Anything you'd think of that would be manufactured in a factory, you know, the chair you're sitting in, machine that made your coffee, you know, the, the computer you're using, the trucks that drive by on the street, all the COVID product research, the equipment being used to make vaccines, all that stuff is designed by someone. And our job is to give them the tools to do it better. And I could see the problems that those product developers had that were slowing them down with using the computing systems of the time. When we built SolidWorks, that was almost 30 years ago. And people don't realize that it was in the early 90s. And you know, we did the best we could for the early 90s but what we did, we didn't anticipate the, the world of today. And so people were having problems with just installing the systems. Dave, you wouldn't believe how hard it is to install these systems. You need to spec up a special Windows computer, you know, and make sure you've got all the memory and graphics you need. And you need to get that set up. You need to make sure the device drivers are right. Install a big piece of software, a license key. I'm not making this up. They're still around. You may not even know what those are. You know, Dana's laughing because, you know, zero cool people do things like this anymore. Um, and it only runs on Windows. You want a second user to use it. They need a copy. They need a code. Are they on the same version? It's a nightmare. The teams change. You know, you just say, well, get everyone on the software. Well, who's everyone? You know, you got a new vendor today, a new customer tomorrow, a new employee. People come on and off the team. The other problem was the data stored in files, thousands of files. This isn't like a spreadsheet or word processor where there's one file to pass around. These are thousands of files to make one, even a simple product. People were tearing their hair out. John, what do we do? I've got copies everywhere. I don't know where the latest version is. We tried like, you know, locking people out so that only one person can change it at a time. That works against speed, it works against innovation. We saw what was happening with cloud, web, and mobile. So what's happened in the years since is every one of the forces that product developers experience, the need for speed, the need for innovation, the need to be more efficient with their people and their capital resources, every one of those trends have been amplified since we started Onshape by a lot of forces in the world and COVID has amplified all those. The need for agility and remote work COVID has amplified all that. At the same time, the acceptance of cloud, you know, a few years ago, people were like, cloud, uh, you know, how's that going to work? And now they're saying to me, you know, increasingly, how would you ever even have done this without the cloud? How do you make SolidWorks work without the cloud? How would that even happen? Well, you, know, you know, once people understand what Onshape's about, and we're the only full SaaS solution, software as a service, full SaaS solution in our industry. So what's happened in those years? Same problems we saw earlier, but turn up the gain, they're bigger problems. And with cloud, we've seen skepticism of years ago turn into acceptance and now even embracement in the COVID-driven new normal. Yeah, so a lot of friction in the previous in environment. So cloud, cloud yeah. obviously a huge factor. Uh, and I guess, I guess Dana, John could see it coming, you know, in the early days of SolidWorks with, you know, you had Salesforce, which is kind of the, uh, first major independent SaaS player. Well, I guess that was late '90s, so it was post uh, SolidWorks, but 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 pre Onshape. And you know, Workday was 
you know, pre on shape in the mid two thousands. And, and, but, but, you know, the bet was on the SAS model was right for CAD and, and product development, you know, which maybe at the time wasn't a no brainer or maybe it was, I, I, I don't know, but, but Dana, is there, is there anything that you would invest in today that's not cloud-based? Um, that's a great question. I mean, I think we still see things all the time in the manufacturing um, world that are not cloud-based. And I think, you know, the closer you get to the shop floor and the production environment, um, I, I think John and the PTC folks would agree with this too, but that it's, you know, there's reliability requirements, there's performance requirements, there's still this attitude of, you know, don't touch the printing press. So the cloud is still a little bit scary sometimes. And um, I think hybrid cloud is a real thing for those or on-premise solutions in some cases is still a real thing. What, what we're more focused on, and um, despite whether it's on-premise or hybrid or, or SaaS and cloud, is a frictionless go-to-market model um, in the companies we invest in. So SaaS and cloud are really make that easy to adopt um, for new users, you know, sign up, start using a product. Um, but whether it's hosted in the cloud and whether it's SaaS, you can still distribute buying power. And um, I would, I'm just encouraging customers in the customer world and the more industrial environment to entrust some of their lower level engineers with more budget discretionary spending so that they can try more products and unlock innovation. Right, the unit economics are so compelling. So let's bring it you know, to, to today's you know, situation, John. You decided to exit about a year ago. You know, what did you see in PTC other than the obvious money? What was the strategic fit? Yeah. Well, Dave, I want to be clear. I didn't exit anything really. You know, I, <laughs> I love doing it. it. I don't like that term <laughs> exit. I mean, Dana had to exit as a shareholder. <laughs> and so it's not, a, it's not an exit for me. It's just a step in the journey. Um, what we saw in PTC was a partner, first of all, that shared our vision from the top down at PTC, Jim Heppelman, the CEO. He had a great vision for, for the impact that SaaS can make based on cloud technology. And really, as Dana highlighted so much, it's not just the technology, it's how you go to market and the whole business being run and how you support and make the customer successful. So Jim shared a vision for the potential and really, really um, said, hey, come, come join us and we can do this bigger, better, faster, we expanded the vision really to include this Atlas platform for hosting other SaaS applications at PTC. I mean, Dave, the day I arrived at PTC, I met the head of the academic program. He came over to me and I, I said, you know, and, and how many people are on your team? I thought he'd say five, 40 people on the PTC academic team. It was amazing to me because, you know, we were, we were just near about a hundred people when we were acquired in our total company. We didn't even have a dedicated academic team and we had, a lot of students signing up, you know, thousands and thousands. Well, now we have hundreds of thousands of students. We're approaching a million users. And that shows you the power of this team that PTC had combined with our product and technology. Boom, you get a big success for us and for the teachers and students of the world. We're giving them great tools. So, so many good things. We're also putting some PTC technology from other parts of PTC back into um, on shape, one area, a little spoiler, a little sneak peek, working on taking generative design. Dana knows all about generative design. We couldn't acquire that technology. We were a startup, you know, just too, too much to, to, to do, but PTC owns one of the best in the business. This Frustrum technology, we're working on putting that into on shape and our customers um, will be happy to see it hopefully in the coming year sometime. Nice, great to see that two-way exchange. Mm -hmm. Now you both know very well when you start a company, it's of course a very exciting time. You don't have a lot of baggage, you know, aren't customers pulling you in a lot of different directions and Correct. asking you for specials. You get this kind of clean slate, so to speak. Absolutely. And I would think in many ways, John, despite, you know, your install base, you have a bit of that dynamic occurring today, especially, you know, driven by the forced march to digital transformation that COVID caused. So yeah. when you sit down with the team at, at PTC and talk strategy, you now have you know, more global resources, you got co cohort selling opportunities. You, you know, you know, we, you, what's the conversation like in, in terms of where you want to take the division? 
Well, Dave, you, you actually, you it sounds like we should have you coming in and talking to us about strategy because you've got the strategy down. I mean, we're doing everything you said, global expansion, we're able to reach cross selling. We've got some excellent PTC customers that we can reach, reach now and they're finding uses for Onshape. I think the plan is to, you know, just grow, go, go, go and grow, grow, grow. We're, we're looking for this year, priorities are expand the product. I mentioned the breadth of the product with new things. PTC did recently another technology that they acquired for Onshape. We did an acquisition. It was it was uh, small. It wasn't widely announced in, um, in an area related to interfacing with electrical CAD systems. So so we're doing we're 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 expanding the breadth of Onshape. We're going more depth in the areas we're already in. We have enormous opportunity to add more features and functions. That's in the product go to market. You mentioned it global global presence. That's something we were a little um, light on a year ago. Now we have a team, Dana may not even know it. We have an on shape dedicated team in Barcelona, based in Barcelona, but throughout Europe, we're doing multiple languages. Um, the, the academic program just introduced a new product into that space. That's, that's even fueling more success and growth there. Um, and of course, continuing to, to invest in customer success and this Atlas platform story, I keep mentioning, we're going to soon have um, we're going to soon have four other major PTC brands shipping products on our Atlas SaaS platform, and so we're really excited about that. That's good for the other PTC products. It's also good for Onshape because now there's 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 other interesting products that our Onshape customers can use, take advantage of very easily using, say, a common login conventions about user experience they're used to and best of all they're SaaS based so they that makes it easier to begin with so that's some of the exciting things going on I think you'll see PTC um, expanding our lead in SaaS based applications for this sector for our um, our target uh, sectors not just in um, in CAD and data management but another area PTC's big in is augmented reality uh, with the Vuforia product line leader in industrial uses of AR. That's a whole nother story. We should do a whole nother show on yeah, yeah. Yeah. augmented reality. Very but cool. These products are amazing. You can you can um, help factory workers, people on the you know the people who are left out of the digital transformation sometimes who are standing in front of a machine all day. They they can't be sitting like we are doing Zoom. They can wear an AR headset and our tools let them create great content. This is an area Dana has invested in, in other companies. But what I wanted to note is the new releases of our authoring software for this AR content getting released this month use through the Atlas platform, the SaaS components of Onshape for things like uh, revision management and collaboration um, and uh, 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 workflow activity. All that, those are tools that we're able to share, leverage, we get a lot of synergy. It's just really good. It's really fun too. We're having a good time doing That's it. That's awesome. And then we're going to be talking to John McElhinney later about Atlas and do a little deeper dive mm -hmm. on that. And Dana, what is your involvement today with, with Onshape? Are you looking for, you know, which, which of their customers are actually adopting and they're going to disrupt their industries? Are you going to get good pipeline from that? Or how do you collaborate today? That sounds like a great idea. Um, <laughs> As John will tell you, I'm constantly just asking him for advice and impressions of other entrepreneurs and uh, picking his brain on ideas. No formal relationship, clearly, but um, continue to count John and, and John and <laughs> other people at Onshape in, in the circle of experts that I rely on for their opinions. All right, so we have some questions from the crowd here. Um, I, I, one, of, one of the questions is for the dream team. You know, John and Dana, what's your next next collective venture? I don't think we're there yet, are we? <laughs> no, I just say, as Dana said, we love talking to her about, you know, Dana, you just returned a compliment. We would try and give you advice on the deals you're looking at. And I'm sort of casually mentoring at least one of your portfolio entrepreneurs. And that's been a lot of fun for me um, and hopefully of value to them. But um, also, Dana, we you're, you're an important pipeline to us in the world of some new things that are happening that we wouldn't see if uh, you know you've shown us some things that you've said. What do you think of this business? And for us, it's like wow, it's cool to see that's going on, and that's what's supposed to work in an ecosystem like this. So we we deeply value the ongoing relationship. 
And no, we're not starting something new. I got a lot of work left to do with what I'm doing and really happy, but we can, we can uh, collaborate in this way on other ventures. I like this question too. Somebody's asking with cloud options like Onshape, will more students have STEM opportunities? So, so that's a great question. Are, are you, because of, of SAS and cloud, are you able to reach you know, more students much more cost effectively? Yeah, I, I, Dave, I'm so glad that, that, um, that I was asked about this because yes, and it's extremely gratifying to us. Yes, we are because of cloud, because Onshape is, is the only full cloud, full SAS system or industry, we're able to reach STEM edu education, we're bring, able to be part of bringing STEM education to students who couldn't get it otherwise. And one of the most gratif gratifying things to me is the, the um, emails we're getting from teachers um, that, that really, um, uh, and the phone calls that where they, they really pour their heart, heart out and say, we're able to get to students in areas that have very limited compute resources that don't have an IT staff where, they, they don't know what computer the, the students can have at home and they probably don't even have a computer. We're talking about being able to teach STEM on a phone, to have an Android phone, a low-end Android phone. You can do wow. 3D modeling on there with Onshape. Now you can't do it in any other system, but with Onshape, you can do it. And so the teacher can say to the students, they have to have internet access. And I know there's a huge community that doesn't even have internet access and we're, we're not able unfortunately to help that. But if you have internet and you have even an Android phone, we can enable the educator to teach STEM. And so we have case after case of saving a STEM program or expanding it into the students that need it most is the ones we're helping here. So really excited about that. And we're also able to let, in addition to the, to the run, on, run on whatever computing devices they have, we also offer them the tools they need for remote teaching with a much richer experience. You know, could you teach SolidWorks remotely? Well, maybe if the student ran it and had a Windows workstation, you know, big, big high-end workstation, maybe you could, but it would be like the difference between collaborating with Onshape and collaborating with SolidWorks, like the difference between a Zoom video call and talking on the landline phone, <laughs> you know? It's right. a much richer experience and that's what you need in STEM. Teaching STEM is hard, so yeah, we're super, Super um, uh, excited about bringing STEM to more students because of cloud and SaaS. Yeah, and, and we're talking about innovation for good. And then the discussion, John, you just had, it really, it, it, there could be a whole nother vector here we could discuss on diversity. And I want to end with just pointing out, so Dana, you're a new firm. It's a woman-led firm, two, two women leaders, you know, going for it. So that's awesome to see. So yeah. really, yeah, thumbs up on that. Yeah, Congratulations we're, we're, on getting yeah. that off the ground. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thanks you guys, really appreciate it. It was a great discussion. I learned a lot and I'm sure the audience did as, as well. In a moment, we're gonna talk with Onshape customers to see how they're applying tech for good and some of the products that they're building. So keep it right there. I'm Dave Vellante, you're watching Innovation for Good on theCUBE, the global leader in digital tech event coverage. Stay right there.